Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are taking a look at a very weird blitz burn deck that user Mudda took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO modern league. So let's straight up go into why it's weird. So when you think about the creatures of this strategy and you think about burn, typically they run Swift Spear Goblin Guide. And when you think about blitz, they typically run Swift Spear Soul Scar Mage. But this one, Mudda threw in another creature package of Akum Demonetization Hound plus Wayward Guide Beast. Uh, we played the, the Akum last week on the channel. You might've seen that. It's pretty good. You can get him for four damage on the second turn, very aggressive. But once you run out of land drops, it's kind of underwhelming. So that's where the Wayward Guide Beast comes in, also known as Bad Goblin Guide. People were making immediate like comparisons to Goblin Guide when this thing got spoiled because it's like straight up worse because Goblin Guide, while it gives your opponent lands sometimes, this one, when it hits, you have to return a land you control to your hand. But the good thing about that is that it can pump our Akum because we can get another land drop for it. And also it's a pretty decent mid game top, de top deck is a 2-2 haster for one. Like it can get in for decent damage. I can see this thing being pretty good. But yeah, with all of these creatures together in this deck, it is a one of the most creature heavy blitz slash burn decks I've seen. It's 20 creatures, 22 spells. And hopefully all those creatures can put in a lot of work for us so that the burn spells can do the easy cleaning in the late game. That's the plan. Let's get to it, but I'll warn you, this deck has one of the most questionable sideboards I've ever seen. So we're gonna get to that right in a moment. Let's do it. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out TCGplayer.com through our deck list link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some Magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon underscore T3J to save 15% and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I'm going to be filming this video here today. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out via Mana Traders. This is Bad Goblin Guide Blitz or Landfall Blitz. So, like I said in the intro, the creature package of Swift Spear Soul Scars, what you typically see in Blitz, Swift Spear Goblin Guides, what you see in Burn. But now we got Akum Demonetization Hound plus Wayward Guide Beast as a way to pick up lands, replay them to pump that Akum. Oh, Fluffy, you're raiding during our intro of YouTube. I'll address it momentarily, but I'm recording for YouTube. We got a couple Searing Blazes. Another way that we can turn it on is by picking up a land with a Wayward Guide Beast. Boros Charm's there for Burn as well as Bolt and Lava Dart for Prowse Triggers. Light of the Stage for more Prowse Triggers and Skewer as an additional Bolt. We got a total of 18 lands. And our sideboard. This is, like I said, the sideboard for today's deck is one of the most questionable sideboards that I have ever, ever seen. It's weird. Like, it's got a play set of Lava Spike and three Ramanop Ruins. Like, why? I, I'm I'm guessing that these come in when um, Searing Blaze is dead and when your creatures aren't as good in the matchup, maybe? And so maybe you need to bring in some more non-creature-esque stuff if you're going up against something grindy like Control. I don't know. I'm not sure why the heck this is here, but it's here. We have a place that a pirate spell bomb is a way to kill Ariok Champion and her core Firewalker. And then a place that a smash for those Urza decks and hardened scales and such. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Direwolf87, who last time we played against this person, they were on Druid Elves. Not Warrior Elves, like they were the last time we played them, but it's Druid Elves. And this is going to be good. a good keep. It's very creature heavy. It's got two bad goblin guides, which could potentially be terrible. But we're going to give it a go. We lack fetches. I think I have to start on Akum. Because I think that that's just... Like, it's the summoning stick one, so I think it has to be the first thing we play. 
It looks like they're still on elves. They're an elves loyalist, by the way. They have a Yuraga Tree Speaker avatar, and they've been playing different elf brews. All right, shock here. Get a pump. Do we go with one of our bad goblin guides here to pick up a land? Not sure if we do. Um, you know what? Let's do it. We're just going to go for all the aggro we, de we potentially can. We have a lot of hasters, so might as well. Let me guess. Free land? Nope. Land of War Elves. All right, we're picking a land back up. It's going to be the Inspiring Vantage. Seems you play this guy often. Yeah, no, there's people on the channel that I play against so many times. Like, I, I would say the person that I played against the most in the channel's history is the Patricks. And if not the Patricks, the next person is ZLS706. I've, I went up against Dark607 many times. I went up against that Tron player many times. Um, I forget his name, JMac9000 or something. And uh, I went up against Direwolf a few times. Ooh, Lava Dart's good. Pump with Akum. Swift Spear. Lava Dart on Llanowar Elves. Now we can just flash it back and kill the other, the other Mana Dork as well. And just completely Mana Screw them. They're taking it all. So I'm going to be able to play another 2-2 two -two Haster for one, the other Wayward Guide Beast, next turn, and continue to get my landfall triggers. Yo, this is pretty stupid aggressive. Play another Nettle Sentinel. That is fine. Boros Charm. I right, play another Wayward Guide Beast. <laughs> this is crazy. This is kind of crazy. I think they have no way to, to avoid lethal here. They can block two of our 2-2s, two but five is still coming at them. They should have definitely traded last turn. All right, that was crazy. Uh, sideboard time. Um, again, we have, like, if I were this person who built this sideboard, I would have definitely put in more Searing Bloods. Like, Searing Blood would be, is like one of the perfect sideboard burn cards, and you have no way to kill an artifact or enchantment in here. You don't have wear and tear. You don't have... Destructive Reverie of none of that. It's such a weird sideboard. Um, but yeah, I think I run it back the same. Boros Charm is not the best here. What would be better than Boros Charm? He has like Lava Spike. Stay low to the ground. Because on the draw for sure, Boros Charm is not what I want. Maybe that's why it's here. Now that I think about it, maybe that's why... Lava spikes in the board. For when you're on the draw, you can cut Boros Charm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. Ooh, that's a Searing Blaze, but we have no creatures. I think it's going to be a mole. Uh, yeah, I'll keep that one. And I think I'm going to toss Wayward Guide Beast. All right, Land of War Elves. Oops, I did not mean to shock there. I did not know I was going to draw that Inspiring Vantage, but it's okay. Goblin Guide. Getting there for two. We give them an Elvish Arc Druid. It's gonna about it's about to get scary up in here. There it is. I have no way to kill it, unfortunately. I need to draw a bolt. Lava dart. Not exactly what I wanted. But you know what? I think I might have to lava dart off that Elvish Arcturid. It's that important. Or do I light up the stage? If I let them untap with that Elvish Archdruid, they could potentially do so much. What do we reveal? Nettle Sentinel? Ugh. I think I have to kill the Archdruid. Just letting them untap with that gives them so much momentum. 
Yeah, I'm gonna deal with it because next turn before I attack, I can just lava spike in to light up the stage and get all my prowl triggers anyway. All right, it's dead. We're down to 13. Land War Elves, Nettle Sentinel, Nettle Sentinel. Oh, they're back on Warrior Elves. Those are definitely not Druids. Akum, I'd love to play Akum, but I think I'm just going to go for my Prowess, a Prowess Triggs. Light up the stage. Oh, those are good spells. Those are real good spells. If only I went to combat first. We give them a free forest. We're gonna trade with Gob They're not trading with Goblin. Dude, I literally have lethal in my exile zone and you're just gonna take it? Like, do they have a Satessin Petitioner or something? Or like a Nylia's Disciple? Like, why the heck do they take it? I think they don't realize how Light of the Stage works. I exile them, I can cast them until the end of my next turn, so I can still cast those. Nylia's Disciple? It has to be. I don't see any reason why they would take it if they didn't have Nylia's Disciple. Kali Hydra? So they're playing Squirrel Hydra Elves, the ones that we played on the channel. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna bolt their face. And then lava dart their face. And then flashback lava dart on their face? I, I mean, I'm confused. That's it? Like... GG, you playing our Squirrel Hydra Elves from YouTube? <laughs> I think they might be. Sweet. Sweet. That's insane. I wanted to see the Squirrel Hydra Elves works. This person's definitely an Elves Brewer. I like that. I've played many different kinds of Elves in the channel. And, and IRL, all Elves, all the same. GG, dude. <laughs> see, I told you. I told you they had it. When they were playing that Druid Elves earlier, I was like, they're definitely Paradox Engine looting their library until they find the Akromas. They're going to give their whole board haste. And then they're going to kill us. Like, I thought they were going to have it, but they didn't until now. I knew it was there, but it just wasn't in the right deck. This definitely belongs in the Druid version. Got a game here against Garbled, and we are going to be on the play here with some Landfall Blitz, and that looks good. It has a Searing Blaze, which is a card that can potentially be dead in some matchups, so hopefully it's useful here. If they have a fat creature like a Goyf, at least Searing Blaze can, shrink, Searing Blaze can shrink it. All right, show me something that's a good matchup, please. Let me win. Go easy on me. Okay, this looks like Searing Blaze might do something. Oh, never mind. It's a Lantern Control. But Burn's pretty good against Lantern. They mill a Goblin Guide, which I wanted to draw. Sad I didn't draw it. All right, let's Lava Dart their face. Play a Soul Scar. It looks like our, our, um, our Searing Blaze is going to be dead here. Come on, don't have the lantern. No nuts.
Surprised no claw. Yeah, me too. There's a lot of things I'm surprised about with this deck. But it was interesting. I wanted to try out Wayward Guide Beast to see if it was good. No, we're going to take our Boros Charm. Yeah, I can technically burn my own creature. And Soulscar Mage wouldn't shrink it because it's only when you deal non cannon damage to your creature your opponent controls. But I can Searing Blaze my own creature, right? Oh, no, no. It has to target something they control. All right. Skewers is a pretty decent draw. All right. Bolt, Skewer. And I'm even going to Lava Dart here. Yo, that's one away from lethal. We're getting them to one here. If they can't deal with my creatures, then the Soul Scar Mages are taking it. That was a huge hit. It's like if your mom sat on you. Inventor's Fair, so they can't gain life off that. They only got one. Two. They have to control three or more. Texas Pandemonium doesn't do it. They found the Lantern, but that doesn't do it either. They needed to empty their hand and play a bridge, so yeah. The Soul Scarred Mages should have it here. Yep, alright, sideboard against the Lantern. We're gonna cut the Searing Blazes. And bring in the super weird, but I guess logical, Lava Spikes. And lava darts are and all that either. So we're gonna cut three lava darts. Are we gonna cut the lava darts? And we're gonna bring in more lava spikes and I guess Ramana ruins. I still don't know why the Ramana ruins are in the board, but I guess we're about to find out. It's Splish, not Smash. Have you ever played Legend of Zelda um, Wind Waker? It's Splish. I can't do vibrato. That's one thing I can never do as a singer. I've sung a lot of songs, but I cannot do vibrato. I think that's something you're just born with. I don't think it's something you can learn. Um, this hand is very, very risky because, well, we have two chances to hit a land, but seeing as how our luck was today, I don't know if... Um, I will hit a land. Um, this could be very, very terrible. I have lots of burn, though. It's a solid looking hand. It's just, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right. I should have brought in Smash. That's what you guys were saying. Oh, no. I should have brought in the Smashes. I'm going to mulligan. I deserve it. It's terrible. That's better. Throw away What If Foothills and a Lava Spike. Dude, I should have brought in the Smashes. That's what they were for. I forgot. Dude, I'm sorry. Next game for sure. Um, You know what? Maybe I should even cut Lava Spikes because... um. Lantern Control plays Leyline on the board. Crash, you know it was a mistake. Don't give me that. Don't give me that questioning. Don't inquisition me. You never think a deck can get any more- Oh, wow. I was about to say, you never think a deck can get any more annoying. It's a deck that plays lantern combo and a hand disruption. It's just the, the most annoying thing you could possibly think of. The most annoying thing you could imagine. And they just did it. What do we reveal? A codex writer? They're stuck on one mana? This is perfect. All right, Lava Spike you. Soul Scar. Q 
Getting for two. We give them an ancient stir, or we reveal an ancient stirrings. So they're definitely going to stirrings here for a land drop. Play a land, play another codex shredder or whatever. Dart isn't bad here because it can be played from the yard. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I should probably bring those back in for that reason. Because if they mill over it, I can cast it. Picks is a pandemonium. So they didn't even find a land? They're just getting mana screwed? I'm happy that mana screw is happening to, to Lantern because they hecking deserve it. That deck is evil. One of the most evil decks. It's bull for prowess. The only thing that might be considered more evil than Boggles is, is Lantern. Two more lands, I can even crack my Ramanop Ruins. Glimmer Void. Pyro, oh, that was a good draw. A real good draw. I'm gonna Wayward Guide Beast, Bora, oh, perfect. Don't mind if I do, top deck the perfect card. GG. I'm so glad I took down Lantern Control. They did get mana screwed there, but it's, ma it's Lantern Control, so I'm not upset. That deck's evil. Deserves punishment. Got a game here against Stark607. We were literally just talking about the people who I played against most on the channel, and the third most person I've fought against was Stark607, and look at that. We're playing against them again. Told you. I told you. <laughs> the person who asked that, my point proven. So Stark607, again. And we're going to be on the draw here with some Hyper Mega Ultra Aggo Blitz, uh, Landfall Blitz, keeping it. So definitely going to start on Akum, I believe, because he hits the hardest. Like literally on turn two, we're going to swing for eight. That's more aggressive than the Mirror Superion deck we played on the channel. Okay, never mind. They're going to take it from us. So we're only going to swing five next turn. They gotta be taking Akum. They mulligan down to six. And they shocked, so that's good for me. They took the bolt. I'm surprised. Slamming Akum. Here go. If you want me to give you a shout out, Grace, I will, if you're still streaming. Alright, Goif, sure. Uh, do I want to run a Goblin Guide into that Goy for two damage? I don't think so. They are going to take it. In that case, I'll fetch a basic mountain. And I'm actually quite flooded right now. For an 18 land deck, drawing four lands is not ideal. But I gotta draw a bolt so I can shrink that goif. That goif is a big problem right now. A minus lily where we'll get rid of the goblin guide. I drew another Akum. You know what? I think this game's definitely a lost cause. I'm just gonna scoop it up from here. Uh, we're going on the sideboard against Jund. Um, I'm gonna run it back exactly the same because our sideboard's so bad that there's nothing to bring in. So let's just run it right back. The only true sideboard cards in the sideboard are Smash and Pirate Spell Bomb, and even then there's too much of those. I'd only run maximum three Smashes, and I'd only run a maximum of like... I could see a scenario running three, but I would only run two. Gonna head for bed in a bit early. Have a great rest of your stream. Hope you have a nice sleep, Happy. I'm going to give you one more GC hug. As always, thanks for hanging out. And sweet dreams. Good night.
You stream Tuesdays and Thursdays and trying to get videos on YouTube Monday through Friday. This week is missing a vid because I had a terrible league and didn't want to put it up. All right, I'll give you a shout out. Everybody should go check out Grayus if you also like modern content. They're playing Magic the Gathering. All right, we're going to play first. And uh, I would keep this if one of these skewers was a light of the stage, but is not. So I don't know how I feel about it. But I really hate mulliganing against Jund or anything with hand disruption. I hate mulliganing. I just, I don't think it's quick enough. Like, if I whiff my land, it's just terrible. But I'm gonna mull. I'm gonna keep that one and I'm gonna pitch one of these lands. Let's throw away Wooded Foothills. And we'll start on Soul Scar Mage. Hey, Bladowski. Titan 366 thank you so much for the follow. Inquisition. Of course, annoyance. We're losing so much resources, they can deal with our stuff. See, regular burn, a traditional burn would be so much better against Jund than creature heavy burn. Because when you're creature heavy, Jund can deal with you. They're built to deal with creatures. So... Running something like this version is just not going to be very good against Jund. I just gave them a free land. So now they're overstocked on their hand. They got a full grip. Inquisition whiffs. They just got nothing to do. That's good. And of course, I drew another land. 18 land deck, and I'm getting flooded. Bloodbraid Elf. Pick up a land and pass. Hey, Theo. Hello. I'm pretty sure you're a streamer too, right? Let me give you a shout out as well. Theo was last playing some Wizard 101. Is that like a Harry Potter game or something? All right, play Boggling Guide. And get it with everything except Soul Scar. Revealing the fact that we have no spells. Hey, Dire Wolf. This deck is so aggro, it is, but unfortunately, we're going up against Jund, the master of killing aggro. We can technically top deck a couple Boros Charms out of nowhere, so it's not over. Plague Engineer, probably gonna name um, whatever Wayward Guide Beast is. Beast. The name Who Man. That Shrink Swift Spear, I guess. Bruh, can I stop drawing lands? It's an 18 land deck. And I've drawn five lands. I'm only supposed to draw like two or three. Yep, you can see our flood. Found your channel through YouTube, so I would give Twitch a try. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you I appreciate you watching the YouTube videos. Oh my goodness, dude. When is it gonna end? When are we going to stop drawing lands? Just give me a Boros Charm and a Bolt. For the love of Arceus. The Olivia Voldaren down, my dude. I have one chance and one chance only. Here we go. It's not it. Dude, serious? <laughs> wow, dude. All right, we get taken down by Jund, of course. Got a game here against Kai Guy. Kai Guy, are you in the chat? I know Kai Guy. All right, Kai Guy is not in the chat. And <laughs> we won the die. We're going to be in the play here with some um, Landfall Blitz. And this looks very aggressive. Let's keep it. Looks pretty good. 
Goblin guide. I'm getting there for two. See, I quite like the Wayward Guide Beast in here because this deck functions off two lands, so it doesn't matter that you self-bounce your lands after that point. Snapcaster Mage. Oh, don't be just guy control, please. I don't want to get Helix Snap Helix. Not today. All right. Um, let's go Basic Mountain and go Wayward Guide Beast. Getting there for two. Oh, that's Lucky Seven Moon. It was it was it Lucky? I mean, well, a five old league, so I assume it was. Opponent's gonna bolt one of my dudes. Demons shocked. Bolts Goblin Guide. All right, bounce back Mountain. Spectacle Light of the Stage. Akum and Arid Mesa. We have a solid late game plan here, I guess. I play Arid Mesa, crack it, get a basic mountain, play our Akum, our free Akum. Go to combat, get in for two. I'm expecting them to just take it because they want to snap bolt next turn probably. Nope, they're just going to bolt it straight up. All right, get down, Soul Scar. And we have a good amount of reach here. We have uh, 10 points of burn with two bodies on board. Ooh, Skewer is good. Get a pump. I'm just going to go main phase Boros Charm Skewer to get prowess here. See if that works. Hopefully it does. Remand. Yep. I was going to get in there. So Boros Charm could actually be a potential double strike usage if you have enough fetches for Akum. I can see that. All right, we have so much burn and they're at six. Yeah, we're, we're definitely getting this one. I hope I don't eat my own words, but it wouldn't be a fluffy wolf if there wasn't at least one blood moon in the stream. Yeah, see, like, I'm pretty sure there has been fluffy streams in the past without blood moon and more reanimator Vesper Lark. But yeah, blood moon is a staple of the stream. It has to be shown in the stream at least. If the whole stream goes by and there wasn't any Blood Moons played, Fluffy at least has to show one on screen. Or start a practice match and just play it. Just so that they that you can fulfill it. Alright, Goblin Guide. Should this deck have any of the Mythics red spell land cards that flood out scenarios? Um, the Shatter Skull? I mean, you could, but it's only an 18 land deck, so do not expect that to happen. It likely will never happen. It's just that I'm getting unlucky because I'm the master of mana flood and mana screw. So I, I'll get mana screwed, but or flooded, but you won't. So don't worry about it. If you're going to play Shatter Skull, then it would have to be in like a mono red prison or like mono red. Just mono red, like scred red or something like that. But even then, it's not that good there. All right. We're just going to pass a turn and Boros Charm them at the end of turn, untap Boros Charm them again. They know I have a Boros Charm up, so we got them by the balls here. Yeah, Flo Shatter Skull does not belong in prison, that's what I'm saying, because you got it does nothing, first off, and you got Blood Moon. And you'd rather play snow covered mountains and scred. So it just belongs nowhere except, um, except Bel Belcher decks. All right. Um, against Jeskai control or blue red control, there's nothing we really want. 
But you know what? This is such a weird sideboard. I'm going to cut lava darts and bring in lava spikes. Want to get more damage out of my spells? And lava dart doesn't really hit any creatures of theirs except um, Snapcaster, so... Uh, Mulligan the Zero Lander. <laughs> we'll keep that one. Even though it has no creatures. I don't want to go to five, so... Throw away Skewer. Come on, give me a creature. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Goblin Guide. Getting there for two. They're going to manipulate the top card of the library, likely. Through the Breach. Okay, so it is, is it? It's not Jeskai. We don't care too much about Breach because it's slow. And we're trying to win before turn five, so. But usually Breach decks have a Simeon Spirit Guide, right? Some of them do. But not all of them. Some, some decks really just try to control and play Blood Moon. All right, go to combat, get in there for two, see if they want a Piker, Ambush Viper, Bluster Storm. Oh, yo, we got double light at the stage here. I should have waited on my land drop and waited to light at the stage first. All right, light up. Oh, I should have cut Searing Blaze. Light up again. A bunch of cards I can't cast. I need to draw a land. Not a land. All right, let's go Swift Spear. Go to combat. Snow-covered mountain. I'm kind of tempted to light up the stage here so I can hit my land drop, play a land, and then skewer their face. I'm really kind of tempted to go for that. I'm not going to risk it. You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I have to risk it because they have breach. I don't have much time left. No, 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 no. I skewer. Because if I topple land, I just go bolt, bolt, bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skewer. Uh, MTG Nexus, thank you so much for the raid with the party of four. Welcome, raiders. Nice to meet you all. My name is Maven, aka Marin. If you know me from YouTube, I like to stream Magic the Gathering on Mondays. And when it's not Monday, I am a variety streamer. So it is nice to meet you all. Welcome in. And let me give you a nice little shout out. Oops, I'm not shouting on MTG Bot. I'm shouting on MTG Nexus. How'd the stream go? What were you playing? See, now when I want a land, I don't get it. <laughs> when I don't want lands, I get flooded. Like, that just keeps on happening. It's the theme of the stream at this point. And we gotta accept it. This is just the latest breach list. Bluster Storm's interesting. All right, I'm expecting Cryptic Command here. So I don't think I want to cast anything. Oh, wait, no, no, no. No, I'm just dead. Because they just go Cryptic Tap, and then they just untap and breach Emrakul. Yeah, we're dead. I guess the only thing I could do is play like, like Cryptic Command's not there. I didn't want to wait until second main phase, so after Cryptic resolves, I can then follow up with some stuff. But if I start, if I cast a spell now, they're going to counter tap, which is going to be bad. But at this point, I have no choice. So, let's lob spike you, see if they got Cryptic Tap. Swing first. 
Yeah, but I can get prowess this way, and I have to YOLO it at this point. Yeah, so they didn't have it. I have to YOLO it at this point. Because I have no choice. They're going to breach. All right, that is counter unless you pay three. Bluster Storm's not bad. Do I bolt their snappy or do I play soul scar? I think I bolt snap because it'll allow me to attack here. But if they have a bolt of their own, I'm gonna be sad. Let's just attack and then let up the stage. Try to hit our land drop and then follow up with soul scar. We give them a free flooded strand. They trade with Goblin Guide. Take two. All right. Light up, please. Give me my hecking land. Come on. Oh my goodness, really? I got flooded every other round, and now, and now I don't get lands when I desperately need them. 18 land deck, and we're 17 cards deep and only found two lands. That's Magic the Gathering for you. Sometimes it just... Hex you. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to lava spike their face and then just like follow up with Soul Scar Mage. Looks like they did not find their Emrakul. So they are not breaching quite yet. Aether Gust. I'm putting that on the bottom. I need mana. You know what? I think I am going to go Akum here because I'm going to hit my land drop next turn. I can feel it. Next turn is finally going to be the turn we're going to hit our land. Yeah, my word. It's free value. Why not? They're going to deal with whatever creature we got anyways. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? Are you serious? We still didn't hit it. Yo. That's absurd. Do I YOLO out another one or do I just go bolt bolt? Because if I bolt them down to four here, the next one I can go bolt skewer. Ugh, so risky. I'm going... I'm going Akum. I just know they're going to have answers. Please, deck. Please give me my land. Please, this turn. This turn. Come on. 19 cards deep. Thank you. All right. Now I can toss triple bolt at their face. Um, don't think I'm gonna swing first. I don't want to risk cryptic command here because I don't care if I prowess or not because two bolts are lethal either way. Doesn't matter if I prowess or not. It was not a fetch land, but it was still a land. All right, I'm gonna bottom that Akum. Taking it. All right, cool. Hewer. bolt so we got there but i was always wondering why the breach deck wasn't like top of the meta because it seems nuts you just control 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 breach emerald it, like it seems insane but there's a reason why it's not top tier and i guess this was a good showing about that because sometimes you just don't find the emerald or you don't find the breach the problem with the the deck is that one of the two can be dead without the other. So you, your opening hand could basically be a six or five card hand, technically, if you have, like, say you got two breaches. The re like, you basically have a five card hand because, yeah, it has some problems like that. Like, if you drew an Emrakul or if you draw two Emrakuls, then boom, those are just dead duds that you just skipped your draw, skipped your turn, basically. So that's the reason why it's not top of the meta. But I think it seems nuts, but that right there. Got a game here against OZ Lelowin. Le Lelowin or is it Leyoin? Cause don't in some languages don't two L's make a Y sound? 
All right, we're going to be able to draw with some Landfall Burn. That's going to be a keep that looks pretty good. I'm really hoping Searing Blaze will do something here. Oh, it doesn't look like it will. And that's why people cut it nowadays. I think that, you know, back in the day, I, I could see um, Searing Blaze being a play set in the main deck like it used to be. But it ain't like that no more. I really think it's a sideboard card now. And I wouldn't even run Searing Blaze on the board. I would run Searing Blood. Because Searing Blood's just more consistent. You don't need a land drop for it, and it does well enough damage. Alright. Sacred Foundry. Play land. Fetch. I'm expecting them to bolt this before it grows, but we'll see. Swisspear. Is it Raman time? Yeah, Blaze has become blood. I don't like Searing Blaze like I used to. It's all about Searing Blood in the board now and cutting Searing Blaze from the main deck. It's very backbreaking indeed, but it's situational as heck. And there's the Remand. So it looks like we might be going up against Through the Breach. Maybe not. Okay, so we're going up against As Foretold Living End. It's going to be pretty scary, seeing as how we're a very creature-heavy version of uh, Blitz. Alright, Shock. And I'm going to go Lava Dart plus Light of the Stage main phase to try to get more prowess triggers. All right, spectacle. We hit Wayward Guide Beast and Boros Charm. All right, let's play that Wayward Guide Beast. Nice little 2 2 haste there for one. I like it. Can give me another landfall trigger next turn. That's a lot of damage. That's uh, 10 coming at them. Let's see if they have the um, a way to living end here. Electro Dominance, rip. There's a living end. They just had the nuts in the opener. All right. I think that's going to be GG right there, honestly. I don't think we can come back from that. They just happen to have it in their opener. Usually those decks have to cantrip like crazy to find it, but they just naturally had it. Right, Searing Blaze, their dome. And they even have a remand for that Searing Blaze as well. All right, Akum. So if I next turn top deck of fetch land, I can go fetch attack for four, Searing Blaze, Boros Charm, which is exactly 11. Oh, Boros Charm went away. Yeah, it's over. All right, yeah, they just got the nuts. All right, sideboard time against Living End. There's really no sideboard for Living End, so I think we cut Searing Blaze. We just bring in a couple lava spikes. And because I think this deck has too low of a land count, I'm also going to bring in a couple Ramanop Ruins. Or just one. Run a 61 card deck. Yeah, put in more land. That's what I did. This deck is so weird with the sideboard. Again, for those who just showed up, this is the deck with the world's weirdest sideboard. But we're making it work. Or at least we're trying to. <laughs> All right, we're playing first. And that looks great. Looks like your typical burn deck right now. Some cards make sense and some are super odd. I know, right? I really feel like optimal burn nowadays has to be Rakdos because Scourge of the Skyclaves is so powerful. 
like feels just as powerful if not more powerful than Eidolon Waker of Waves is that another cycle dude I think it might be all right Swifty Getting for three. Reveal top card. It is going to be Curator of Mysteries on top for the opponent. You're going to fetch. Hello. Fetch and tapped. Uh, Direwolf87, thank you so much for the follow. And once again, GG's. All right, Light of the Stag. And Lava Dart and Inspiring Vantage on top. Inspiring Vantage is not what I wanted because I already have plenty of lands. See, this is what happens with this deck. It's either you get flooded or screwed. There's never any in between. All right, let's Lava Dart their face. Go to combat. Attack for four. And I will flashback Lava Dart here. No reason not to. It's not going to see any usage any later. You know, maybe I should have actually cut Lava Darts for Lava Spikes because... Lava Darts doesn't particularly kill any creatures here. Alright, this is the turn. They're going to have to living end. Kill my guys. But it's a good thing that I got them at 7 because Boros Shrine will put them down to the range of a bolt. Which is what we want. That's a 1 blue to cycle. Okay, 2. Discard 2. Look at the top card. Tribe River Winder. What's that emote? Oh, is that a sleep emote? Blood. Oh, I see. All right. Pump back, whom? Go to combat. Go for lethal. Engineered Explosives is on top. They're not blocking her at fetch. Get a basic mountain. Pump again. Lethal. Gotta do something about it. Electro Dominus Living End. Is it time? Nope, they scoop it up. Alright, this is a terrifying match, honestly. Alright, so I'm gonna bring in the rest of the Lava Spikes. And I'm gonna cut the Lava Darts. Or at least a couple lava darts. Try it like that. All right, this is terrifying. We're on the draw now, so they can surely find the electro dominance or as foretold living in right away. Hopefully, they're forced to fetch shock a few times. This white light in front of my face is starting to make me really tired. I have a bright ring light that's like almost on max right in front of me. And sitting in front of that for six hours really takes a toll on your on your tiredness level. It's getting pretty late too. It's 10.37 p.m. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to go get some food and then relax. Probably um, do some sweeping around here. It's a little bit dirty. Um, I'm going to mull... I don't know. Because I have light up the stage. Usually I keep one landers if I have light up the stage. I think I'm going to try it. Darts instant speed, which makes it better. Not in particular in, in in Burns' case, because in Burns' case, you don't care if it's instant or sorcery. As long as it hits the opponent in the face, that's all that matters. Engineer to is on one. That's a little scary. But they're down to four cards left. All right, get out, Akum. Oh, 
I don't want to overcommit two creatures here because of the fact that they have the engineered explosives. All right, I'm just going to ramen up ruins here. Hopefully I can bait them into cracking their engineered explosives. They just take it. All right. Let's light up the stage. Wayward Guide Beast. Let's play it. Are they going to crack yet? Come on, crack that explosives. Crack it. It's time. Shocking. Oh, come on. Oh, they're just cycling a waker. They have to crack it next time. They just have to. Like, I'm going to play a fetch. Pump my guy twice is going to be... I'm going to be attacking for six. Like, they're going to have to. They even got crashing footfalls in there. Yikes. I like that card. I want to play with that card more. Like, I want to build a carry Zev's expertise deck with that card. All right, Aaron Massa. Again, try to debate out that that engineered explosives. All right, they are gonna crack it. Fetch. Um, let's just get a tapped sacred foundry and throw out swift spear plus soul scar mage. And next time we just toss a billion burn spells at their face, and hopefully that'll be good enough. See, they even brought in Tormont's Crypt expecting the, the lava darts to be a problem. I don't know why, but sure, whatever floats your boat. I believe they won, run one singleton stomping ground just so they can... Uh, oh man, that does it. So just so they can potentially hard suspend crashing footfalls. Because that card on suspend is even fine as it is. All right, that was actually a really good draw. That was a, a great draw, actually. I think that was the best draw on the deck. And I just go Lava Spike, Skewer, Skewer, and... Is that even lethal? No, I think I get them to two here. Yeah, I think I'm getting them to two. Just bombard them with everything I got in one single turn, getting them from 14 down to one. They're at one. And you know what? You know what's good here? Is that Ramanop Ruins, if I draw a land, an untapped land, it's also lethal. Just any land. Just please not be um, an inspired vantage. Knowing my luck, if I do draw a land, it's going to be inspiring vantage. And they did not have it. They couldn't find the living end. Now I was going to top deck. What was I going to top deck? I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut from the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. Or you can come out on a future Monday if you want to see the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube. You can see it before anyone else does. Or you can even play against me if you want. I welcome that as well. So we're only speeding up one game today and there was a couple cut and here's the reason why. Every single loss this deck got was from Mana Screw or Mana Flood as shown earlier in the video. I wanted to put something in there for filler because everything else would have just been cut. It all would have been cut because it was all Mana Screw or Mana Flood, which is the same thing about this deck. And you know, if you're a Magic player and you've been a Magic player for more than a few months, that Mana Screw and Mana Flood's out of your control. It's not gonna happen to you every day. It's all luck of the draw. So this deck really got like no fair and square losses where we actually got to do something. It was like either we did nothing or we just drew nothing but lands. So that's really the same thing about this deck. It performed pretty well. When the deck actually did what it did, it won. 
and the only way it lost the only way it lost was to actual rng so i kept this one in here this was a mana screw game as you can see on your screen right now this one land is the only land we got and we were stuck <laughs> so that that's another i just threw this one in here literally just to commentate and say what i had to say here but yeah yet another mana screw game and with that let's go on to the wrap up hope you enjoyed all right so we ended up with four total wins and I like the next innovation, how it's the most creature heavy blitz stack I've ever seen, which was a plus in some cases, but also a minus in a lot of cases. Because there's decks that are very heavy on creature removal and have no problem dealing with creatures, which is basically any deck that has goif, which our losses were two goif mid range decks, like Jund, and there was that RG one, there's like Naya Stoneblade or something. And Goyf is like the bane of our existence. If you have Goyf along with removal and they even had Scoos, you just like this deck can't beat it. It's just life gain fat creatures that block well. If you're going to block this deck well, it's basically over. It's basically over because this deck doesn't have a mass amount of reliable creature removal despite it being burned because, you know, you got Bolt. That's basically it. You got two Steering Blazes. And Lava Dart's not super reliable creature removal, and Skewer needs to be turned on by Spectacle. So if there's a fat blocker in your face, you're likely not going to be able to hit it. The other problem is, like, you wouldn't be able to hard cast Skewer, because this deck gets mana screwed all the time, or it gets mana flooded. I don't know. I just got the worst luck with mana screw and mana flood in this stream. And also, I really, really, really don't think 18 lands is enough... You really want those landfall triggers for Akum, and you also want to draw at least two lands. Play what a burn deck typically runs, which is 20 lands. That's what I would run. I would run 20. I guess what we're testing today is, is the bad goblin guide good? I mean, along with the Akum. I think it was. I liked it, because out of all the creatures that you could top deck, I think that Wayward Guide Beast was like the best one to top deck. Um. In my opinion, because like, you know, a late game Akum sucks, a late game Swiss Fear is underwhelming, a late game Soul Scar is slow, a late game Goblin Guide is fine. So Goblin Guide and Waver, so it just gives you a second creature that is not bad. And like the Akum hits really hard early. There are some times where the Wayward Guide Beast hard carried the Akum. Although the two are so inconsistent because they need each other. If you if you have them separately, they're not as good. I just don't think it's a very good package. You know, the, the Wayward Guide Beast, I can honestly see being used without the Akum. That I, th I think that was definitely the better of the two because, you know, it really helps with aggression on like turn two or three. It really helps and makes your deck super mega aggressive on the creature draws. The sideboard of this deck was horrible. I don't know what the heck this sideboard was. It needs way more tech. It needs um, Searing Blood. It needs maybe Path to Exile over Pyrite. I don't know. It needs maybe Wear and Tear. It needs a lot of things. It, there, there's so much things it needs. There's Just take go and search any modern burn sideboard and get some ideas from that because that is what it, like, what it should be. Why the heck is Ramen Up Ruins in the board? Why is it not in the main deck? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And if you're running 20 lands, Ramen Up Ruins might be better. Because if you do end up getting flooded, you at least have something to do with those lands. So very, very questionable. I would stick to a traditional burn deck over something like this. Although the, the Wayward Guide Beast alone was worth experimentation. I just think that you need some other thing to use all those lands for. Uh, maybe another thing to capitalize off of the landfall triggers. Maybe like a plated Geopede or something. But also with the Wayward Guide Beast, we were constantly like sometimes we would get up to like four lands in hand because they would keep bouncing it back and we would draw more lands that we couldn't play. So if there was a way to exploit the fact that your hand was ripped full of, of lands, it could be interesting. Could be an interesting card. I was thinking Convograde, but Convograde is obviously not going to be super good in here. Uh, there's got to be something you can do. I was thinking possibly Magmatic Vortex, which is a card where you can like pay a red and ditch lands to like shock your opponent's face, which is not an awful idea. There, you can do something like that. It could be a good grind piece. 
But yeah, Wayward Guide Beast was interesting. That's the gist of this whole situation. The deck in general? Eh. I would just play Blitz. So I guess that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now, and an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some magic cards or anything magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.